this recording we're going to create and deploy a database design. So the steps we're going to take, we're going to start with um, the logical data model that we created uh, earlier on for our design specified by the business. Um, as we know, the, the logical model is expressed in business language, um, but the physical world has various conventions that we need to apply to it. So we're going to set up those naming conventions within the tool. So then we can generate a physical model from that logical, and then we're going to elaborate that model with specific elements for the database products that we're going to choose. Um, and then finally, we'll deploy that design to the database itself. So let's kind of have a look at the tool. So this is the logical model we're going to start from. As you can see, it's expressed in business language, which isn't suitable for deployment to databases. So what we're going to do is use uh, a naming standards template, which allows us to specify some of the rules of how to convert between logical and physical names and vice versa. So we're going to go across to our data dictionary. So the data dictionary is really useful. It allows us to build a library of reusable components, such as attached properties, rules, domains, data types, triggers and procedures. And in this demonstration, we're going to create a new naming standards template. Now, normally if we were connected to the central repository, that naming standards template would already be in place. Here we're in a, a standalone mode, modifying a MD1 file. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to load into our standalone model, our corporate standards naming template. Okay, so there's various different rules for naming that can be applied. The main area that we're going to look at here is where got a list of, of logical words and their, their physical contractions and equivalents. Um, we can also specify for the tool how to understand the separation of, of logical words in a name. So it'll, it'll detect um, word separations by character or by case changes, etc. Um, and then how is it going to apply it in the physical world? Likewise, it'll also allow you to, to remove special characters from a string and you can specify the behavior or what you want to replace it with. Okay, so there's our naming standards applied. Okay, so before we generate our physical model, just notice here between training course and skill, we've got a, a many to many relationship, a non specific relationship. So the model isn't yet in third normal form. So this wouldn't work as a physical model. We couldn't deploy this to a database. So what we're going to see next is, is how the, uh, the wizard uh, will help us resolve that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's run the wizard. So we can either run it from our Explorer, we can right click on the, the logical model, and generate physical model, or we can go to the menu at the top. So the first job is to, to name the physical model that we're going to create. So we're going to call it HR underscore DB. Um, we can specify what type of physical model it is, relational, dimensional. Um, we're going to select the database platform that we're going to generate to. And this is really important. So every physical model has properties and information associated with the target products that you're um, going to deploy to. So there's a whole bunch of settings we can now apply. Um, the first job is to decide, well, what's going to go into the, the physical model? So we can select entities by business data objects or what tables we're going to, to generate. So we'll select everything here. Next thing is the naming standards template that we, we selected earlier. So let's uh, apply that. We can also apply other naming uh, standards like uh, prefixes and suffix we want to attach to each um, table name or uh, column name. So earlier on, we were talking about our many-to-many -many relationship we had, that non-specific uh, relationship. So this is where the tool, we can tell the tool exactly how to, to deal with that. So we can um, specify to, to create here uh, an associative entity or not bother with a relationship at all. Then we can click Finish and generate the model. So there's our physical model generated. And we can do this a number of times. So from a single logical model, we can generate multiple physical models out, one for each different database uh, product. So the first thing to notice is the non-specific relationship between our training course and our skill here has now been resolved. That many-to-many -many relationship has been replaced by an associative entity, nicely named based on the, the from and to entities. So we can now go through each of the tables in the design and look at the in detail at the generated model. So for our employee table called EMP, uh, we've got a lot of different properties we, we can set for the, uh, for the table. So here's the list of, of columns, and we can go through each individual column 
and look at the uh, the properties that the tool has allocated to it. So the first thing to look at is the, the data type. So the ANSI data types that we saw in the logical model have now been replaced with the database specific products. So for Microsoft SQL Server, here are all the specific data types. Uh, the length has been set, allow nulls, etc. Um, and here we've got properties specific to the database products that we can set. So different database products will have different features, and many of these features are available through Data Architect. The DDL tab contains all the SQL codes that will generate the database, again, specific to the database products, which is SQL Server here. We've also got pre and post SQL, so you, we can add in uh, before that DDL code or after the DDL code, your own custom code. There's lots of other things we can set for the table. So we can set indexes, for instance, security requirements, set permissions for, for the table. For the model as a whole, we could move on and we could set things like functions and procedures, synonyms, triggers, and the user side of the uh, database as well. And we'll cover that in a, in a separate video. So the design is now complete. Next, we can deploy it to the database server. So we've got a menu option here, database, generate database, and off we go. So there's a little wizard here that will take us through the process. Um, we can generate objects, the database connection, so we'll connect to our database. Um, and there's various connection mechanisms, so we can either use, so different database products will have different connection mechanisms. We can connect via ODBC driver, um, through a direct connection mechanism, um, or if we're using Team Server, within the Team Server product, we can store a list of different database connections, and we can select from one of those. So in this one, we're going to connect directly to the database. So there's the, uh, the name of our, our server and we can put in the password and we could store this uh, back in Teams server and reuse it later on. So we connect it to the database um, and we now specify do we connect to an existing database or create a new one. In this case we're going to create a new one. Um, and then we can specify exactly what do we want to add to our database? So we can select individual tables if we wanted to. We've got various different rules and properties here that we can we can apply. In this one, we'll keep it simple. Um, this is now going to give us a summary of all of that and finish, and off we go. So that's now connected directly to to our database and has deployed. Um, so we go to our Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, then we can see if we refresh that fresh with the databases there's our HR database and all of the tables all nicely created exactly as per uh, our model so to summarize we, we took a, a logical model all expressed in business language we applied uh, a naming convention file and then using that we generated a new physical data model from uh, the logical we then we looked through and we saw that the non-specific relationship had been resolved, creating an associative table. Um, we then added uh, some extra information specific to our SQL Server database, and then we deployed it directly to our database server. More information, go to idera.com forward slash contact sales. Thanks for listening.